you do. And again, I'm starting my 41st year. So the technology today, I'm just, I'm more excited. I have to tell you, I'm more excited today than I ever was um, in my dental career. So I'm a member of Catapult and we, there's uh, 25 of us that do live lectures on different topics. A lot of mine are restorative occlusion and uh, digital technology. I also do a course, a business course that actually I'm giving tomorrow on um, for the AGD at Pennsylvania AGD and then on Wednesday for Midway Dental and teach a dentist how to get their overhead down to 55 percent. Those uh, some of those techniques my father taught me growing up in an Italian family with business. So as a member of Catapult we uh, evaluate materials from companies and we test it and so we're one of the first ones to see that. So if you ever get a chance if you ever are in need of speakers Look up Catapult Education, and these are some of the companies we work with. And uh, as you can see, there's a number of companies. And again, I don't get paid for anything. They don't pay me to promote any of their products. What I promote is what I believe in and what I'm passionate about. So I first of all want to thank Prexion and Tim for putting this together today. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will see how important or how uh, we're almost reaching a point where it's necessary standard of care to have a CVCT in your office. And by the end of this, I can hopefully show you the advantages of that. This is my email address. If you have any questions at any time about anything, products, materials, anything, I don't always know the answer. I don't profess to know the answer, but I'm going to find out the answer for you if it's a, you know something that I can find out. And also my cell phone number. Please feel free to call me at any time. I mean that. Uh, I just absolutely love having those conversations. So there's a lot of uncertainty. As I mentioned earlier, we're going through some uncharted waters. And as we look at going back into the office, there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of decisions that we have to make. Uh, as uh, Tim shared with you, I, I literally commute to Chicago. We have children uh, and family in West Michigan, so it's very convenient for me. But I fly to Chicago, and I see patients six to eight days a month. And I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm doing dentistry that I love. Uh, I love our profession. I tried to get out of it. Uh, Dr. Graham wouldn't let me. I shouldn't say it that way, but I didn't want to get out of it after I was out for a few months. So, but we have a lot of uncertainty right now because we've never been down this. We don't know what to expect, but there, there are certain things that we, we know. It will not be business as usual. Uh, if the profession is as exposed to aerosol breathing, we are in for big changes that I never imagined. Thus, this is one of the main reasons for CBCT is so important. I think one of the things we can say for sure is it is going to be a while. We'll get there, but it's going to be a while before we see patients back to back like we have. I think you're going to have to have your reception room isolated. I think you're going to have to use rooms that can be isolated, the open op concept right now, I think it is, is not a good thing at this time, but if that's what we have, and we do have some of that in our office, we're gonna have to work with that. But I think patients are, may even have to wait in, in the car until the room's ready. We have to make sure we're following the CDC guidelines. And if you want to review some videos and, and some webinars that have taken place, if you go to Midway, edu, midwayedu.com, uh, Lou, Dr. Graham has not only doing the new norm daily for blogs, but there also have been some excellent webinars on there, or catapult education. Uh, you can go to and see that. But we do know for, for a fact, it's not going to be business as usual. So why is it so important? Where does the CBCT, where will it play its role in this? Well, one of the things for sure that we know is that when I have a patient, when I return one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to, to do, I want to see less patients per day. And I want to make sure that I do quadrant dentistry. I'm going to be using a rubber dam. I'm going to be isolating. I'm going to make sure that I'm controlling those aerosols. Also, I'm going to make sure I can get as much dentistry done in that time setting that I can. So how do we go about, how do we find out and discover this? That's one of the things we're looking for. This may also be an opportunity for us. And, and again, I always look at the glass half full. I truly do. Uh, you know, that's one of the things I've always 
taught my children, but the glass is half full. This may be a time where for years, months, years, weeks, whatever it is, you may have want to make some, change, make some changes in the office. Now is the time. Now is the time that it is that opportunity to make these changes. And I will tell you something. There are certain changes that if you decide not to make, then change will change you. This is one of my sayings I have. If as dentists, we don't change things in the op office, whether it be anything from the front office, anything from delivery dentistry, anything that, you know, diagnosis, anything, if you don't change, it will change you. Because let's face it, and we all know this, we are in a digital technology era, more than we've ever been. What did Digi what we can do digitally in dentistry nowadays is unbelievable, but it's exciting. And yes, there is a cost for that, but it's cost effective. And you know that's where we have to become good business people, smart business people. It is cost effective. And I'll explain that to you, especially with a CBCT. So if you just take a minute and imagine the digital transformation that has happened in the last hundred years, if you just look at the changes in the last 20 years, in the last year, it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. This is a, a, a slide that I've put together. And uh, for some of you, you, you can relate. Now, now, for some of you in the middle, right next to the calculator is, uh, many of you may not know what that is. That is actually a slide rule. When I was an undergraduate at Michigan, when we had physics and chemistry and, and math courses, this was the only thing we could bring into our test the only thing. If you got caught, because by my junior, senior year calculators uh, start coming out, if you got caught using a calculator, you were expelled from school. Nowadays, uh, when my, our children was in, were in fourth grade, they started getting all these trigonometry calculators, but I would never allow my children to have one until they could do their multiples by 12 and give me change for $100. It's sad when you go to the grocery store and someone can't give you a chain, the right amount of change and the cash register tells you that. So there's some good parts and bad parts. But that's a calculator. In fact, if you uh, watch the Nassau movie, this is what, this slide rule is what put uh, the people on the moon. That's what they use. And right above that, you'll see a film. Uh, I can't tell you the last time I had an, well, that's not true. I've had new patients transfer the last year where offices are still using film. Why, I don't know. But as we look at this slide, you can see, of course, the lifeline in the upper right-hand corner, our phone versus the dial-up. And I grew up where we had uh, sharing of telephones. You know, we had a party line. So, and for those that don't know what a party line, take a chance to look. But if you look at medicine and what we're doing digitally, robotics, it's incredible. Here you can see how it's controlled in the preciseness that they can do these surgeries, whether it be gallbladder or whatever it is, and dictate and take the human aspect as far as the actual surgery out of it, it's unbelievable. And we're gonna see more of it. We're going to for sure see more of it. So we need to change. We need to get up to date on things. This is a, a quote that I absolutely love by Bill Gates. It says, I have a simple but strong belief. The most meaningful way to differentiate your company from your competition and again, I don't believe I compete against other dentists, but the best way to put distance between you and the crowd is to do an outstanding job with information. How you gather, manage, and use information will determine whether you win or lose. This is if you, during these time, this time off, if you by chance happen to get a hold of a book, Business at the Speed of Thought, using a digital nervous, please read this. It, and what Bill Gates is talking about here is take us as dentists and put it in perspective. And that is, how do we gather that information when a new patient or emergency comes in? How do we gather that information? What do we do with that information? We can only gather the information that we have available to us through what we can get that information with in the office. If you're just using a, a digital x-ray and you just have PAs 2D, then that's what your information is gathered by and that's how you're gonna make your decisions. And when you look at this quote, for dentistry, winning losing is not primarily a financial consideration, although anytime you buy equipment, it is a financial consideration. But winning and losing ultimately deals with the quality of care that we provide our patients and doing 
all within our means to assure the best outcome for every procedure we perform. We as dentists, it's in our nature to do the right thing. It's in our nature to make the best diagnosis. It's in our nature to provide the best dentistry for patients. But if you don't have everything that is possible, all the information that's possible, those results, they may be tarnished or they may not be the best results that you could have had. The third dimension in dentistry raises the odds for consistent success. I want to eliminate any possible, any possibility of me failing in a procedure that I do on a patient. So the relentless onward march, as I said earlier, advanced digital dentistry, technol digital technology and dentistry is a fact of life. Today's practice, you definitely have to focus on embracing technology and integrating it into an efficient workflow. So the key to success, again, to bring back what I say, the key to success is being able to see, to being able to see and have the information in order to present a treatment plan, whether it be a new patient, an emergency, it's being able to see and then make a decision about how to go about treatment. That's the key to success. So let's take, for instance, today's initial exam in our office. You know, the old days, we used films, a mirror and explore, and those go back. Those go back so far. And one of the questions I always present to the audience is who was president of the United States when x-rays and explorers were first considered the standard of care? And this may shock a lot of people. It was Woodrow Wilson back in 1960. Now there's a lot of studies that have been out that are out today that state in, uh, in one of my other presentations, I go through this, that state that for instance, bite wings, and periapicals, bite wings, especially in proximal caries, is only 49 to 51% proficient. And that's why we've stepped it up and we have a carry view. And that's why we stepped it up and we have caries detectors, whether it be infrared or, or fluorescence. So for some of us, when I saw this, I thought, wait a minute, our technology has changed so much, there has to be something better. What is out there that I can make a definitive diagnosis? So if we look at radiographs and what's available to us, we have, of course, the full mouth series, we have the cone beams, we have the, you know, the CBCTs, we have bite wings, we have periapicals. So what is it in this, what is available to us that is gonna give us the, more, the most information? Well, if you don't know, the obvious answer is the CBCT. There's no question. Absolutely no question about it. Now, do we still take bite wings? We do. So for every new patient, we take six, and I'll get to that, but for every new patient, we take a CBCT and we take six vertical bite wings. So here's a patient that was actually a patient of ours that came into the office. She came in as an emergency, referred by her sisters. So question is, does this PA, she's having pain and discomfort on the upper left. Does this PA give you enough information you can make a diagnosis? And the answer is obviously no. You really can't see anything. Well, maybe just a little bit in there, you can see something and we'll come back to this x-ray. But the truth of the matter is you cannot make a definitive diagnosis to make, to give to the patient to further the treatment of this patient. It's like flipping a coin. There's no question about it. This is a patient that I saw. She's a, a young lady. She's 22 years old. She's getting ready to graduate from the University of Chicago. And she had an accident. Uh, she's a track, she's on a track team. She fell and she broke off her front tooth. And before I got there, one of the dentists uh, treated her. And uh, we didn't know if she was, she lived in Iowa, if she was going back and forth seeing her, uh, her dentist. And she came in and she goes, you know, I'm, I'm due for a claim. We said, well, you're not seeing your dentist at home on your visits back home? She goes, no. She goes, it's been about a year and a half. So, you know, I happened to notice there was some minor swelling uh, on number nine and I took a PA. And so I look at this and I go, hmm, I don't like what I see there, but is it enough information there and at the periapical to make a decision, a definitive diagnosis? Well, the obvious answer is no. You can't tell what that is. Is it an artifact? What is it? Again, I was flipping a coin. 
And the question that comes out is, let's be honest with each other. For the past 100 years, plus years, how much have we been guessing regarding diagnostics? I have to be honest. And there's a lot of times I did not know. We didn't have the technology that we had nowadays. I didn't know about CBCT the way I know it now. If I only would have known what I, five years ago, and I think back, oh my gosh, if I would have known five, six, seven years ago, this was introduced in, to dentistry back in 1995. And if I would have known, of course, nowadays, you know, the price obviously has come way down, but nowadays it's like, there's no question. I can get that answer. And, you know, but I think about how many times did I guess? So here's the question that I uh, presented to Tim to ask all of you. And, and again, I'm using myself as an example. As a general dentist, what is more frustrating? Not being able to present a diagnosis and treatment plan to a patient from a 2D x-ray or referring the patient for a CBCT. Let me explain that a little bit. More now than ever, I promise you, when you see an emergency, you wanna be able to give a definitive diagnosis. You do not want that patient to leave your office. You're, you're gonna to have to deal with PPEs, you're gonna to have to deal with sterilization, you're gonna to have to deal with aerosols, you're gonna to have to deal with these in the office. And you do not want that patient to be referred for a CBCT. When I looked back and, I, and the endodontist was across the parking lot and I had to send them or make an appointment to either the endodontist or oral surgeon, which was about three to four miles away, it was very frustrating. And the reason for that is not so much I wanted to be the patient's hero, but I wanted to be able to plan this. Because we all know if, if you haven't had a patient get lost in the referral routine, then you haven't been in dentistry very long. Not only that, and not to put the blame on anyone in that, but I want to be able to communicate. I want to be able to present this treatment to that patient. I want to be able to say to that patient, I know what I'm doing here. We got this. So, you know, that's very frustrating to me. When I look at a 2D x-ray and I, only, I can't give them what I know I can give them with a CBCT. So, why do I rarely take a Panorex today? Just doesn't give me any, enough information. Saying that, I'm gonna show you how you can get any Panorex off a CBCT. You do have that capability. That just doesn't, it, depending on what you're looking for, but it just doesn't give us enough information especially like if you look at how everything is jammed in in the sinus area yeah you can see the uh I, inferior alveolar nerve you can see the middle part you can see that you can see the the bone you can see the joint on this one this is a beautiful panel Rex. but it just does not give me the information of what i can get and have especially when i know if i have to take multiple x-rays they're gonna get more radiation than what they will get from a CBCT. And I'm gonna customize that field of vision. I'm gonna customize that to whatever I feel that I need. So let's go ahead, and this is where I enter my Prexion. Why Prexion? Well, over the years, I've used uh, a few CBCTs. And what Prexion, and again, I'm doing this because I'm passionate about my Prexion. I'm passionate about what I use. Multiple reasons. One is one of the most important things when I buy a piece of equipment for the office is support. Finances, support, and again, the clarity, the ease of use. And not only that, when I say support, when you buy a Prexion, they educate you. Not only do they educate you, but every question you have, they give you this little USB, and that's not the main education, but there's times where I still go to my little USB, plug it in my computer to remember how to do something, whatever it is. Like to, to plot the nerve, the inferior alveolar nerve, if you're placing implants. So, and again, I'm gonna make a statement here. There is no way I feel anyone should be placing implant, implants without a CBCT whether it be for a surgical guide or just to make sure you know where you're going. I, I'm a firm believer in that. 
But the reason why I went with Prexion, one of the biggest reasons is it gives me five field divisions, and we'll go over that. So why CBCT? Cone beam has radically transferred the way we as dentists can gather information. That's all I've been talking about, with the results being an ability to diagnose and treatment plan in a manner that previously could not even be imagined. I will tell you, once I start using a CBCT, I start again, start thinking back, and I thought, oh my goodness, all the dentistry that I've missed over the years that was possible for me to treat. And when dentists ask me, what about my ROI? What about my, as good business people, what about my return on my investment? I don't address it like that. The way I address it is I can now do more dentistry. It will more than pay for itself, but now I can do more dentistry. And the end result for dentistry is an affordable means of elevating the level of diagnostic abilities with dental practice. That patient doesn't have to leave the office. Excuse me if I get a drink. That patient stays right in the office, they don't leave, and I'm able to deliver unless it's a procedure I don't do. Now for many general dentists, especially right now, if you're going into the office seeing emergencies and you have to do an endo process, I can't imagine doing endo without a CBCT. There, I, any endodontist that's doing endo without a CBCT is, should have their head examined in my estimate, but since we're on the informal. But anyway, so let's look at some applications. First thing I do, all new patients, comprehensive examination and treatment planning. The amount of dentistry I'm able to treat, present, treat, diagnose, evaluate is incredible compared to a full mouth series. Impactions, inferior alveolar nerve location. If you're doing any oral surgery, mental nerve, inferior alveolar, if you're placing implants, endo evaluation and treatment, it has made it just unbelievable. Orthodontics, you're doing Invisalign. If you're doing orthodontics, you're going to want to hopefully check the joints, even in young people, the joints, and you also want to have space evaluation when you're moving teeth. And again, we have a lot of general dentists doing Invisalign. For elevations, uh, if you're placing implants in the maxilla, lesions, trauma evaluation, all of a sudden, you know, I practiced 26 years in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had three boys that played hockey. Our oldest, luckily, was uh, we got lucky and he got drafted by the NHL, but our three boys never had a, a serious trauma. But I did see other kids in the office that when I took a 2D, I couldn't tell where the fracture was, was there a crack or anything like that. In bone structures for periodontal dehiscence, fenestrations. Now, one of the biggest questions that I'm often asked is, what about how much am I responsible for as a general dentist? Please, do I send my cone beams out to be read by beam readers, it's $75. Yes, if there's any questions whatsoever, I send it to an oral maxillofacial radiologist. I want to know if there's any question whatsoever. So I do, I cover my butt. And, and you're going, well, well, what if you don't know? Then send it. And I pass that cost on to the patient. So we got you covered there. Don't get caught up in that. And other CAD CAM devices like 3D models. We know a lot of general dentists that are making their own 3D models nowadays. So in our office, the initial exam goes something like this. I always interview the patient. The reason I do this, because believe me, over 41 years, I've learned a lot of lessons. And one of those lessons is, how do I know that this patient is a patient I want to treat? We do not have to treat every patient that walks in the office. Let's get that first. But not only that, I want to get to know this patient. I want to know the history. I want to know their dental education, level of education, how important it is for them to hang on to their teeth, how important periodontal disease, how important prevention is. So I do the interview, and then I decide what kind of cone beam I'm going to take. If it's, if it's a referral, because I do a lot of TMJ and full mouth reconstruction, if it's a sleep patient referral from the University of Chicago, because our office is very close to that, and we get a lot of referrals, that I'm going to select my field of vision. But in 20 to 30 minutes, I turn it over to the assistant. She will then take the cone beam, and while they're doing a scan, we do, we do an intraoral scan on all our patients, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the reason for that is that's how we make co-diagnosis. That's how we show the patient. And it's, it, the flow is incredible. 
And if you have any questions about how to do that, please email me or when we're done here, ask the question. But in 20 to 30 minutes, we can have all our data. Done. And again, what I'm looking for as far as, is it something, is it a referral, is it an emergency? We decide and then we decide on the field of vision. But the basic, basic new patient usually gets a 10 by eight uh, scan. And you know, that's, that's our go-to scan in most cases. And if I have to adjust that, then we'll go to some other. And I'll show you those field divisions in a minute. This is radiation. Let's talk about radiation. So what we know is a set of bite wings. Radiation is measured in microsieves. And if, if a set of bite wings is 5 up to 32, a full mouse series is 34 up to 150. Because a lot of times, these assistants and everything else, they're retaking them, or if all of a sudden you get a FMX and you need a specific PA, it's gonna be more. A digital Panorex, eight microsies up to 30. Again, not enough information. But a flight from Chicago to San Francisco, 40. So a lot of times patients, when they hear of a cone beam, a lot of times they'll go, oh no, that's, they're, you have to educate them. We have to educate them. This is not a medical. This is not a medical cone beam. It is a dental cone beam, so you're safe. And we show them, you know, what a banana is, what a flight is, and we educate them on that. So this is your typical FMX that all of us that went through dental school, this is what we were taught with, or you take bite wings and a Panorex. Is this enough? For me, it's not enough. I cannot make enough decisions on this. I cannot, I should say, I cannot make enough diagnosis or the right diagnosis, I should say. And this is what my Prexion, again, I, I'm not at the office, so I don't like using stock photos, but this is exactly our Prexion. This is Excelsior, an incredible machine. The ease of use is unbelievable. And I always tell doctors, listen, if you want to learn how to use it and it's in the office, just take your 12-year-old child to the office on a Sunday and learn. But basically, in, in all honesty, uh, I had not gone through the training on this, and it was in the office. Uh, it, this is the Prexion. I had used other ones. And so I flew in on Sunday. I got there real early uh, to treat patients Monday. And I literally went to the office, pulled out my USB, and learned the whole machine uh, in a matter of like two hours of no instructions. Saying that, Prexion is incredible of educating. About a week later, uh, one of the educators came out, and we went through the whole thing with our entire team again because we had hired some new people to work with me and, and so they went through the whole thing and i'm telling you step one step two step three and this is the field of vision and if you look here on the screen and this is the decision you have to make all right so if you look at the five by five there's a five by five ten by five ten by eight fifteen by eight and fifteen by thirteen Field of vision is definitely one of the items that when you go to buy a CBCT, you decide on your field of vision. Prexion has designed this, the engineers have designed this to give you everything you need. And I'm gonna be showing you some examples here in a few minutes. But the five by five is most effective as you look on the bottom there. It tells you for endo, the 10 by five, mandibular nerve, mental frame, and maxillary sinus if you're doing sinus lips. Comprehensive, this is my go-to. My 10 by eight is definitely my go-to, probably about 90% of the time. Because from that, it's less radiation and it, than the 15 by eight, 15 by 13. And I can see everything that I wanna see in a new patient exam. Now, if the patient, if I see anything that would indicate, and again, one of the things I do in my interview is ask them about sleep. Our ADA guidelines tell us we have to do a sleep test and a, a simple Epworth test in the office for a new patient is all you have to do. But if you look by the 15 by eight and the 15 by 13, again, if I get a referral for a joint patient, I'm gonna take one of these. And the reason for that is it gives me clarity. It gives me what I wanna see. And of course the 15 by 13 for sleep and TMJ analysis also. So the field of vision is very, very critical. This tells you the amount of dosage, the microsieverts that you get, okay? So a 10 by eight, uh, basically if it's a rapid, 
and again, you can take a rapid or you can take a standard. And, and uh, if you have any questions, Tim can tell you the, where you would use one over the other. This, would, this tells you the microseed dosage that you get. So you're very safe here, the patient's safe. And this is the, the ease of taking this. If the patient stepped up to the machine and the assistant, as you can see there with a the guide, she's entering the information. And this is what they rest their chin on and bite on. And the machine goes around them like so. And this is what comes up as the machine takes the CBCT, you're looking at the computer screen, you have them set there till it's on the screen and you make sure you have views that you want. It's that easy. It's so easy that it's incredible. And then you're done. Now, I'm not sure if it's exactly what we're doing with CBCT, but basically what we're doing is we're taking slices, okay? We're taking slices and um, all of a sudden my internet's unstable. We're taking slices and these are the views that you're going to get. And I, I wanna simplify this, but if you look at the views here, you can see a coronal, a sagittal, and an axial, axial, excuse me. So these are the views that we get on that. Now this is where a lot of general dentists get nervous, but don't because in a matter of no time, you learn to use this. It's so easy. I can't tell you how easy it is. But the way I do this is living in Vegas. I took a deck of cards, and this is how I explain it. Now, this would be your typical periapical. You have the eight of hearts here. But there's something, this is an emergency patient. There's something underneath that eight of hearts that you can't see, you know? And, and if you're playing blackjack, you want to know where that ace is. Okay, so what CBCT has done, it has allowed us a view to see things that prior to CBCT and dentistry that could only be seen by surgical procedures, uncovering, but with a CBCT, and it has its limits. Remember, it's hard tissue versus an MRI soft tissue, but it allows us to see so much. It allows us to provide early treatment for things that can go bad. But think of it as this is your periapical. Now, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the cards on their side and you're gonna get an axial view. You're gonna see that deck of cards from their side. Excuse me, I apologize. From the top, when I did this, when I took this picture, from the top, the cards looking down on the cards and then the cards on the side, okay? So the top would be like your axial view, and this is your sagittal view, and of course the PA would be your coronal view. So think of it like that. Think of that deck of cards, and you're going to get to take a look in there. And lo and behold, from your axial view, there's a six of hearts in there. And here's your slices with those cards all laying out there. And there's your ace of spades, okay? So hopefully the dealer doesn't have blackjack. And lo and behold, there was one other thing in there. A, po uh, a casino chip. See, those are the things that without CBCT, we would never be able to see. So those slices, and that's all it is, those slices allow us to focus up and down to see and make diagnosis and make treatment planning so much easier. So this is your typical screen that you get, okay? And if you look, the upper left-hand corner is your axial view, the lower left-hand corner is your coronal view, your 3D image view, and your sagittal view. Now your 3D image view, if you look to the right, has different views that you can use, whatever you're comfortable with, okay? So you can change that out. And if you take a look, and then what you wanna do, let me go back here, is take your mouse and you double click on one of those views, it will bring it up on the full screen. This is looking from behind, as if your eyes were in the back of your throat. I love this stuff. And this is looking from your foot up. Here you can see the tongue. So this allows us to see so many things. See your glands there, okay? Now we all have the knowledge of this. Some of it might be a little rusty, but that's okay. This is the fun part. And of course, a different 3D view that I like using a lot for perio. And a transparency uh, view, transparent view, excuse me, 
that I'll show you how we use that to plot the nerves. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you have the possibility of a panel lead. So again, as I stated earlier, in my office, in our office, uh, we usually take a CBCD with some bite wings and a couple of periapicals. And this is what we do. This is a new patient exam. We got our CBCT, our PAs, and our scanner. Our assistants do everything here. While the assistants are doing the PAs and the uh, intraoral scan, I'm reviewing the CBCT. So this is Yoli, one of our assistants. And here's the whole idea, everyone. We blend this digital imaging with diagnostics. So I'm cool diagnostic. I can show the patient with an intraoral scan and with my CBCT and my PAs and my bite wings. It's a no brainer. This is the best treatment plan you can possibly have. Do we have to sometimes have second? Of course, if it's extensive. I don't wanna blow the patient away, but now I have all the available, in most cases, all the available information I can make the right treatment plan and the success rate is increased. I don't so, know. If, uh, this is Yoli, me talking to the. If you would do me a favor Yoli. and show Mr. Jones uh, his front two teeth where he's doing a little chipping. He's chipped them a little bit, worn them away. And Mr. Jones' desires to get rid of those silver fillings, if you could show him on the teeth there. Where he so that all came. So back to our emergency patient. So you're the patient and you are having pain and discomfort. Good day? I don't think so. I don't have enough information here. I'm, yes, if I had here, I'd pull it out, Tim. But we do not have enough information here to make a definitive diagnosis. So this is the patient. Now we can make a definitive diagnosis. think that we're I have no idea but we're definitely seeing a lot of that so this is a patient 77 year old type 2 diabetes well under control faint pain in the upper right uh, last visit was one year ago and she had no symptoms just a routine cleaning her sister referred her to the practice because the dentist did not have a CBCT could not make a diagnosis could not figure out didn't see anything so she comes in with a full mouth set of x-rays. Okay, on the upper left, this is the upper right x-ray obviously, but on the upper left, faint pain. Enough information to make a diagnosis? I don't think so. Here's the other one. Now, okay, the upper right x-ray, we do see something, a little fuzzy there, little cloud. Can we make a diagnosis? No. Is it a cracked tooth? Is it an unfilled canal? What is it? Is it just reinfected? Lower left, we obviously can see the perio here. Is it perio or is it endo? Upper right, eh, you can't make a decision. It looks a little funky in that canal. I don't know what that is. It's a minor post. Uh, everything looks okay. Is it? We can't make the right information. Okay, so. Symptom free, enough information, eh, most time it's okay. So again, my CBCT, what do we see? So on the upper right, what we see is a retained root tip. Also, no filled MB2. Now we can make the right decision on what, how to treat this. And also, the neat thing about it, because if we're gonna plan a implant here, is we can see that the buccal wall is still intact. And there's two unfilled canals. This is what the sagittal view would look like. Okay, there's your abscess. Now, going back to the original PA, one would never have thought the extent of that abscess. Again, just more information. Also, what else do you see? This is the same patient right there. 
bingo, resorption. Right there it is in the axial view. So again, this gives us that capability to make a diagnosis and to present. This actually, uh, since we have a periodontist in the office one day a week, we, uh, Dr. Graham arranged to have this patient. No endo needed, laid a flat, cavity cleaner, put some uh, glass ionomer in there, resin modified glass ionomer, successful. This is my patient, the young girl from the University of Chicago track team. This is a problem with PAs, is that we get this foreshortening. Now this looks fine, I mean, there's, we're looking at it, and we know there's an issue, so a little suspicious in the periapical, but it looks fine. That's the problem that I have with PAs, is that, is it giving me the right view to make, for me to say everything looks good? And if you remember the one I showed you earlier, I'm suspicious. Here, flipping a coin. We don't know what it is. So, I'm, Katie, I decided to take a CBCT. These are my views. Hello? Okay. So these are my views that I get from my CBCT, the axial view, the coronal view, and the sagittal view, and my 3D image. And if you look here, you can, if you look real close, and I'll see if my pointer, you can see here a little bit, and I'm going to advance that. There it is, right there. So what do we have? Well, remember I told you her past history was that she fell, we're getting resorption. All right, there's the infection, okay, on the sagittal view. Now, what is the beauty of this view? Well, I had to unfortunately call her mom and give her this news that we could not save the tooth from the, uh, you know, the uh, endodontist, the periodontist, and I spoke. We could not save this tooth in a 22-year-old young lady, beautiful young lady, and it was heartbreaking. Believe me, it really got to me a little bit. But the good news was we could see that the buccal plate was there. And so we planned an implant there. So let's take a look at some of the everyday uses that you can use as a general practitioner. If there's some periodontists or all surgeons on, in on this meeting, that's great. But these are some of the areas. I use it routinely for TMJ. I do a lot of, I do a lot of reconstruction. I would never dream nowadays of doing reconstruction without examining the joints, not even close. Okay. And here I show the cleft lip, what it looks like, what it gives the surgeons the availability and surgical implant stents. There are so many implants being placed in the failures because stents are not being used. Orthodontics, oral surgery, implants, perio. And let me just show you some of the things that, has, that I have seen in our office and with some research. Here's what periodontal, periodontal disease, this is the view you get. You could actually do a measurement off your comb beam to see where the the depth of the furcation area in a periodontal disease. Here you can see it here and here. These are just views, so easy to do. I always say if I can do it, anyone can do it. Patient comes in. Now, you know, hopefully we're past the days of metal posts. We used to use para posts all over the place. And, you know, obviously the flex, lack of flexibility we learned but the patient's coming in in pain and discomfort and swelling. Can you make a diagnosis off that 2D? Absolutely not. But when you take the CBCT, there it is. I just love this. Vertical root fractures. You're not guessing. You are not guessing. You can see it in the different views there. Lack of filled canals. Is it endoperial? From this, you make treatment plans for implants and involve the patient. Endodontics, vertical fractures. One of the biggest problems we have as GPs is when we're going to restore a tooth, if this tooth had the root canal done there on the bottom, you see the periapical lesion. But the question that comes up is proximity of decay to the furcation. Is the tooth weak now? If we weaken that tooth in furcation, you know it's gonna crack and split. And we go ahead and we build up a core, we do a crown prep, Six months later, the patient comes back, 
and we have to give the bad news and you know it's crow on our face that mm, we weaken the frication area endo trauma cracks fractures orthodontics impactions locating those impactions and knowing how to go about treatment planning it has made a huge difference tmj i wish every patient i had the joint would look like this i wish and pray <laughs> they would look like this it would make my reconstruction and everything so easy this is beautiful and these are the views that we all know we know this anatomy here is we're starting to see a little erosion this is a patient that has a little erosion and here you can see the medial pole on b and also on the a you see that little pressure so these are the uh, a and b are the coronal views as you can see on the bottom here the right tmj show flattening and erosion of the pole and that so uh, c and d show the coronal and sagittal views of the left tmj and if you it's hard to see but on that d c and d there you can see a little bit of osteophytes what osteophytes are better known as bone spurs and if you look you can see it plain real plain here now, in order, this is a perfect example. In order for me to be an expert at it, I'm gonna send this one out to the oral radiologist. I'm pretty sure I see what I see, what I see, but I am going to get the expert on this one. And again, I know my limitations and I can present. So one of the things we see is on, a, on A, you, I labeled it beaking. What we know is that the development of osteophytes Bone spurs is to stabilize the overload caused by occlusal forces, patient bruxing, grinding, the wrong bite. So we know that this beaking and these osteophytes, that is one of the side effects of that. And here you can see the osteophytes blowing up pretty good there. And then osteonecrosis. Have we lost our blood supply to that joint? These are tough ones, but they're treatable. And we, we build a crutch, we put the patient in an orthotic splint, and we get them through this. When you have clicking, where's that disc? A lot of times we have to do not only a CBCT, but an MRI. So these are some of the areas that we use routinely. And for many of you, you can identify with this. Yep, obstructive sleep disorder. It's a screening. Let me go back to this. It's a screening, it is not a diagnosis. Now, one of the things I do treat is sleep. And the reason I got involved in sleep is because I wondered if some of my early reconstructions back 20 years, knowing what we know nowadays about obstructive sleep disorders, did that have an effect on the occlusion? So I make sure that I screen for this. When I look at my sagittal and my CBCT, I look at the space. And if you look at A and B, this is a drawing of a patient that definitely has very little airway during sleep. And C and D is what the airway looks like when we treat them with a mandibular advanced appliance. So you can see the difference. It definitely works. And we're getting close to time here. I'm running over question and answers, but this is, this is everything you can do with your Prexion. And I absolutely love it. And of course, implants we don't want this if you're not using a cbct you run a high risk this is out the lingual we want this we want ideal and i'm just going to show you in surgical stents real easy real quick here you want to know where that nerve is if you're removing that tooth if that's my child i want to know where that nerve is so it takes literally less than two minutes, I think. But let me just take you through this real quick, just to show you how easy this is. So the first thing you get is this is your
Hey, Robert, uh, Dr. Boer, can you turn off your share screen? Oh, the doc got kicked. Hello, everyone. It looks like uh, Dr. Tomorrow got kicked off. Um, I am going to see if I can get him back on the line. Give me one second. Guys, thanks for hanging in there with us. Dr. Tomorrow is going to be signing back in to answer the questions that I received. No idea what took place there. So let's go back and I apologize. So um not sure where we set off at, but let's go back here. So let's go back to surgery. Um one of the let's get this. one of the side uh one of the many GPs are placing, many of the general practitioners are placing implants. My personally, I can't believe I would do it without a CBCT. There are some I know that are safe, but this is the success we want. We want to know where that nerve is, if we're placing mandibulars, we want to know where that sinus is. And you just can't predict that from a 2D x-ray. We don't want this. This is a disaster. This is a disaster. Take it out, graft it, let it heal. If that's perforated that buccal plate, this is out the lingual, we don't want that. We want this. And this is where a lot of times, Start looking at using more surgical guides. There, it's a no-brainer. And you need a CBCT to get the DICOM, the digital image, which stands for Digital Image Communication Medicine. You need that for the lab to make this. This is a space between these two teeth here that is very narrow, and you wanna make sure that implant goes in that right place. So we wanna know, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to, to find that nerve. It's so easy. We say two minutes, I think I can do it in less than two minutes now. But if you're doing surgery, if this is your child, I'd want my surgeon, or if I'm doing it, to know where that inferior alveolar nerve is. So there, let's take a look how easy it is. So you take a comb beam, and this is the view you get. And you're getting, the upper left is your axial, your lower left is your coronal, and your lower right is your sagittal, and then you have your 3D image. So well, the first thing I do is I switch my 3D image to the transparent view, okay? Let me go back here. And then what I do is I, fo I, I focus on my coronal view down here and I find the inferior alveolar nerve, right? On the left, on the right, excuse me, and then on the left, all right? So I know it's there. Then all I do is I bring up the alt 
but and I mark it. That's how I mark it. I just left click and mult hit alt, left click. There it is. So then what I do is I take these other points and I rotate this so that that is that is over that inferior alveolar nerve. And now if you look at the sagittal, there's your canal. So how am I going to mark this? Real easy. Take the control and you just left click on it until it comes all the way out the foramen the middle foramen, the right, and then I do, the, excuse me, the right, then I do the left. As you can see right here, there's the right and the left, different colors, all right? Now I know where that nerve is, okay? And I kind of take it away, I like that view. Now, if I wanna mark, what's this? Our incisive canal, I can tell you where that is. It's real easy, you do the same exact thing, okay? Let me go back. So now what I want to do is I want to plot, and we do this in the office, so we show the patient how easy it is, you know, during an exam. I want to show the patient. We talk about, is this something you want to replace these teeth? Usually that, you know, they, we know that ahead of time they're either coming in for implant consult or if it's a new patient. Then we will show them how easy this is, all right? I will do this real quick. And so I measure, excuse me, I'm, I measure here the height. Over here, the buckle, lingual width, go to my implant library, select the implant that I want, place it in there. But now I'm going to orient it too, easy to do. Just orient it, now I know exactly where it goes. Place another one, orient it, and thus, let me go back, there you go. And if you look on top, I can see where those implants on the uh, 3D view, I can see where those implants are to those nerves. That's how easy it is. It basically takes that amount. So what are the benefits? We've talked a little bit about the benefits, but the ability, the ability to see more. If you can see more, you not only eliminate risk and mistakes, you also create the opportunity to do more. That's all we ask as doctors. That's all we ask as healthcare providers. Give us that opportunity. That's all we ask of my, that's all I ask of my patients. If you give me that opportunity, I'm gonna provide absolutely do everything I can to provide you the very best. So I have this saying, this is one who works with their hands is said to be a laborer. One who works with their hands and mind is said to be a craftsman. One who works with their hands, mind, and heart is said to be an artist. This is from St. Francis Sissy, and I live by this. I want to be an artist. I really do in what we do in dentistry, and that's the way I always say it. So as we go through these tough times, we're all locked up, we're all quarantined. You know, we think about heroes in life, as we mentioned earlier, those people working on the front, those people, those nurses, the grocery keep, the grocery people at the grocery store, the doctors, the researchers, you know, just you, we want to, we want to think about all those people again that are making a difference, trying to get us through these times. They're working their butts off. They really are. We think about what happened to us in 9-11, Boston Strong. Uh, a few years back on October 1st, this is the time of year that I'm up for two weeks for 39 straight years, the same group of guys, we duck hunt fish up in Manitoba and I get a phone call. In 39 years, I've never gotten a phone call from my wife. And lo and behold, as many of you know, we had the Harvest Fest. 22,000 people, 58 dead, 500 injured. And whenever I do anything, I remember these times. This is Nisha. Nisha was our next, is our next, was our next door neighbor. She unfortunately was one of the victim, single mom of three children. Her parents have stepped in, and it, and it strengthened us. It's unfortunate. We miss Nisha so bad, and all those that have left their lives. But we come out of these times, and that's what I want everyone to remember. We'll get through this. We're going to have to change things a little bit, but it's also that opportunity. Look at the glass half full. It's that opportunity. And a lot of times, you know, I sit there and think, oh, poor is me. Woe is me. But you know what? I came up with a saying several years ago. My father was in the Navy. It says, the price has been paid. I have no right to complain. And that's so true. When we think about not only the country we live in, but the opportunities we have as professionals and what we do for patients, we should be thankful because again, there's been a price paid for that. So that's my little soapbox. Thank you. And now questions. And here's my email and, and phone number. Please, questions. Speak. Dr. Tamara, we had a question um, on the chat. It says, is it easy to distinguish vertical root fractures with the scans? If, okay, so 
as in anything, they have their limitations. But a vertical root fracture is much easier on a scan than anything I've ever seen. Yeah, the answer would be yes. If, you know, if it's a, a definitive root fracture. But yes, but be, a lot of times I'll catch them on the axial view also, as I showed in that one case. So it is easier to see. Okay, next question is, what's your standard protocol of x-rays when patient coming to office? How to communicate with patients to pay for CT? Okay, so what we do is we refer to this as, well, first of all, that's another point to bring out is that, you know, we charge anywhere from 175 to 225. I've seen prices, costs of 175 to 225, 250. So what we do is we take a full, we don't say a full mouth series, we say a full set of x-rays. And we actually, and we use med some medical billing in our office. So, but what we tell patients is I, when I interview them, I want to, them to know that I'm going to gather information and I'm going to do everything I can to gather this information and use the best equipment we, that is available to us. And I ask them, is that something that you would like me to do? And they go, yeah, obviously. You know, if you go to a cardiologist, you just don't want them to use a blood pressure cuff. You want them. And so payment has not been an issue because we bill it out as a, excuse me, as a full set of x-rays. And that's how we get around it. But also look into medical billing is, is I think we're going to start seeing. You know, now is one of the times in, in a lot of general practices to really, really consider is, I mean, if these PPOs are not going to step up, you, there's no question about it with this PPE and what we're going to have to use. There's going to be, we're already informing, uh, Lou did, Dr. Graham did a, a video to send it out to all our patients through Weave to link up. And we explained to them that there is going to be additional charge for PPE. We have to. It's just like a cone beam. We're going to provide you the very best. So we can bill that out as not a FMX, but as a full set of x-rays. That makes sense. Thank you. Also, now we're on insurance. Yeah. Uh, insurance companies require FMX and not a panel with perio charting for SRP. Need your opinion. You know what? One of the things I do in the office is stay as far away from insurance companies as I can because I'm not a fan of it. But I don't know that answer. But Tim, if they can, if you can get their email, I will find out from our front desk how that's handled in our hygienist. I will send that over to you. And the other one is, can you talk about integration with different software packages? Um, Tim, you can do that probably better than me, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure of the question uh, regarding software packages. I know that- As far as scanners, I think, I think as far as scanners, um, you know, if I'm understanding the question right, does that yeah, make sense? I'm not sure. Um, this is from Dr. Adams. So, Dr. Adams, if you want to unmute yourself, if you're still on, um, can you kind of elaborate a little bit on your question? Dr. Adams, you are uh, unmuted on my end. Uh, maybe he stepped away. Okay. I will uh, email him. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, they, they, everyone, you know, please feel free. You know, as far as the, uh, the insurance, uh, you know, in the perio, they're absolutely right. I mean, most insurance companies have that. So I, I, um, I'll find that out. And from uh, Dr. Horble. Um, I will be actually sending out the video to everybody that registered for this event. So you'll all get the video. My mug shot. <laughs> I will try to delete the slide with your picture. <laughs> okay. 